guys, before our afternoon rain rolls in, I'm gonna go do some crop scouting quick. So this field here was our first field of corn that we planted. I planted this uh, towards the end of April when the soil temp was cold, though the uh, weather was cold, the forecast wasn't good. Lots of people told me I was crazy, but I made the decision to put it in the ground when the condition was right other than temperature. The calendar said it was go time if the conditions were good. This field being up on a hilltop like it is with lighter soils, it was ready to go. So we put it in. Uh, this is only 48 acres here, and I don't regret putting this in at all. This is some of our farthest along corn, of course, makes sense. Um, it looks pretty good, not bad. We have been out here and sprayed. You can see some of the weeds and a few of the volunteer soybeans here that were coming through. They're starting to die off now that we've sprayed it. And the corn overall looks pretty good. It's a little bit yellow because we've had such cold temperatures and too much rain, so it's a little bit yellow for what we want, but overall, this stuff's coming along pretty nicely. A lot of hay guys finally got their first cut going a couple days ago, and it looks like it's gonna be raining here in about three or four hours, so I wouldn't be surprised if they come by with some equipment and start picking that up real soon. Now this was one of our last planted fields of soybeans right here and you can see the beans are just starting to break through this crust and really start to bust the rows open. The cotyledon as we call it is starting to pull through. That's this piece right here. That's actually the soybean that comes up first. So a soybean actually kind of arches and comes up backwards as I call it from the, from the soil. Even though you can't see all the soybean plants coming through in this line right here, that is a line where they're breaking through the crust. There isn't a lot of crust here, but as you dig through it, you'll be able to find the plants that are just starting to, to come up through here. Oh, there I broke one off. But they're underneath there. They're just starting to come up and just starting to push through. These beans here are actually our non-GMO beans that we got through uh, F2F, or Farmer to Farmer Genetics through Farmer's Business Network. These are kind of a specialty bean that will hopefully be more widely available in 2020. I'm excited to see how this bean does. Uh, I think there's going to be some real opportunities with this stuff. As I mentioned before, non-GMO beans are, are kind of new to us again because we really haven't planted any since about the mid-90s. So I just wanted to take a minute and point out this area here behind me. You can see where it was too wet, too cold, mostly just saturated in cold soils. We've got uh, spots like this where we've got a quarter to a half acre where the corn just isn't there. It just didn't come up. Uh, it rotted away. It's not going to come up. There won't be anything there. And we've got a lot of spots like that. But when 99% of the field looks good, it's not worth driving down the whole field to replant a half an acre here and a half an acre there. The chances of this spot drowning out anyway are pretty high, even if we did replant. So for us, with these spots like this, we're not going to bother replanting this. Most of the time it's just not worth it, but we do have a high percentage of these types of spots this spring because of a couple of the big rains we got and the colder soils we dealt with. This field here is corn on corn, meaning this was corn last year, it's corn again this year. We usually don't plant a lot of that. We usually rotate um, between corn, soybeans, corn, soybeans. But because of the markets this spring and, and the way the markets still are, we did plant this extra field of corn on top of last year's corn stalks. Usually, around us especially, this corn tends to be a little bit slower it's a little bit tougher coming up because the soil is a little bit colder with that extra residue. But this doesn't look too bad. I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here. The stand count is pretty consistent. Again, it's definitely a little more yellow than we want it to be. And that really is a, a, a too much moisture and not enough temperature thing that we're dealing with. Man, does that smell good. The hay, not the cows. Cows are cool too though.
So in this cornfield, we've got 140 acres split plant uh, with two different varieties. What that means is that on one half the planter, we've got a popular uh, variety that we've planted for a lot of years that we know is a really good, strong variety. The other side, we got a different hybrid actually from uh, Farmer to Farmer F2F, Farmer's Business Network. It's a non-GMO corn. I'm actually standing on the split here. So on my left is one corn, on my right is another. Can you tell the difference? At this point, no, not at all. Of course I can, because I got my handy dandy digital app here, so I know exactly where I'm standing. But my point is that the, uh, the F2F seed here looks pretty good. This is a new 102 day hybrid from them. Again, it's non-GMO, uh, should be available pretty widespread next year. I'm excited to see how it does. 102 day gets a little bit late in our area up here. So, so uh, we didn't plant a whole lot of it, but we're gonna see how it does. We've also got some 92 day over on that end of the field, which is a lot closer to our maturity range. Um, it's kind of in that 90 to 100 day is a, is a common range for us. But overall, this corn, again, looks pretty decent. A little yellow again because it wants some heat. A little inconsistent again just because of the, uh, the conditions we've had all spring. But overall, not bad. This is, uh, this is gonna be tall here in a month. All we need is some heat. All right, I'm back where we have had problems with this tile inlet and I removed the old cage from it. I've got a new cage here that I actually got from uh, May West Manufacturing in Hutchinson, Minnesota. These are a little different design. Um, they go in like this and they're open on the bottom enough to let water in but not enough to let critters or or grass or, or residue in there very much. They make these in a few different styles. Uh, I've got a couple different styles at home. I got a big eight or a 10 inch one that stands up pretty tall to kind of replace the uh, the orange chicken bottom ones. I'm gonna try this and see how it works, but uh, but I don't have my rubber boots with and I can't quite get there. Sure wish I was a little taller. I'm gonna come back with rubber boots rather than soak my legs for the rest of the day. This is technically part of my field, um, but I trade some land here with a landowner who uh, we farm grain on his land. He farms this corner here. And the hay's looking all right, but it's definitely too wet to come pick it up right now. So this is probably gonna lay here through a little bit of rain. The good news is it sounds like we don't have a lot of rain coming. All right, in this spot, we've actually got a Hickenbottom tower that's actually broken here. So I'm gonna pull this out, if I can, there we go. Kind of clean it up around it. And now I'm gonna slide in this uh, egg solutions cover that I got from uh, May West in Hutchinson. I'll link them down below. As I said, they got some uh, bigger ones and everything. Should maybe come shovel around this a little bit more. Gotta move some corn out of here later so I'm gonna have to pump that water out because we don't want the bearings of this conveyor running in that water so I'm gonna have to pump that out and shoot some grease into those bearings to make sure they're kind of cleaned out deeper than I thought. Any good uh, millwright companies out there want to work with us on getting a conveyor in here so we can tie this into the leg like the rest of them? You can go ahead and find my email somewhere. All right, we're a little closer to this bearing. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fun to get grease in there. Ooh, it smells good too. Well, I've messed with it a whole bunch. That's as low as I can get it because of all the crud down here that keeps plugging this up and tripping out that little 12 volt outlet, so it's not gonna pump any lower than that. For those of you who have never experienced the joy of having rotten corn water and mud all over your boots and on your hands, 
you're missing out. It doesn't go away for, for a while. It sticks with you for a couple days. Ditch, what are you doing? I'm just running the crud that's inside of there now up and out so it doesn't end up in anything we want to haul out of here. Yeah, that's not good when those bearings are running in water. So we don't want to haul much out like that. But we want this out of here. So we're even getting water out of the end of there, which means I've got to get that water down lower. Don't have a choice. I just don't know that that 12 volt outlet with the stupid reset on it is going to handle that. I'm just trying to dig a big enough hole to get the water to sit over here instead of under the auger. That stupid GFI outlet is not going to let me run that sump on it anymore. There's a grease zerk. Not easy to get to, but I got a trick for that. Luckily, Lumax makes this handy dandy quick coupler thingamabobber that snaps on and then you don't have to set your hands down in the corn water anymore. Well, that's a lot of messy horsing around just to get some corn out of there, but it's done now. But I'm a millennial. This right here is our vegetative buffer that we voluntarily have around uh, one of the ditches that runs through our farm here. You can see the water is still running in there. I thought this would be a nice spot to stop and have a lovely little lunch. It's like having a picnic. Even got the basket. I'm just kidding. I, I did that for effect. I'll pick it up. I'm ready, Onyx. All right, he wants to see if he can get both wheels off the ground. No, I don't even have to check the instant replay. That was a one-wheeler. All right, Rhiannon, let's see it. Mm, you almost had them both off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Anna, how do you like that new collar? You want to comment on it? <laughs> hey, Tominator. I got it a large, because... Hey. What do you think of it? What do you think? All right, take two. No. I did it. This spot right here? Yeah. Oh, you'll make it. You'll be okay. I know. He claims this is it. Third time is the charm. No. You're gonna have to stand up. Pull with your legs too. Keep your butt off the seat. I'm gonna have to hold the seat down for you and sit here, but you're gonna handle everything else, okay? Yeah. All right. Remember, there's a couple things you gotta do first. There you go. What else? One more thing. One more thing under my knee. Over here. There you go. All right, let's go get the garbage. Skies to the west, Onyx. We might not get any rain. Yeah. Now, Onyx could handle this tractor by himself, but unfortunately, there's a seat sensor underneath here that won't let him do it. I even tried unplugging the sensor, that didn't work. I tried using a ratchet strap on the back of the seat to pull that down. Apparently it takes a lot of weight because that didn't work either. He's getting frustrated with it. Thanks a lot, John Deere. You need a lot less sensitive seat sensors, all right? Safety schmafety. This is the farm. We got to get work done. It's a good size wagon you got there, Stefan. So Dad's at home loading the sprayer. We're thinking it'd be nice to get a tank pull or two out. I'm gonna go check on seven acres of CRP that came out last year to see what we wanna do with it. So this area right here has been in a CRP or a conservation reserve program for, I believe it was 20 years, 15 years, 15 years. 
it came out last fall and what we were doing is we were trying to get it into a different conservation program uh, where it would actually be used as wetland bank meaning farmers could purchase this as as ag wetland bank and if they were going to elect to drain a small wetland in their field they could swap that for uh, x amount of acres of wetland here and then this would be preserved with a uh, with a continuous easement on it uh, but due to some of the some of the stipulations of getting into that program I don't believe we're going to put this specific seven acres in that program maybe none of it I don't know but but this seven acres right here that's high and dry that that we tore the little trees out of last year we're actually talking about maybe just coming in here with the planter and putting a really thick rate of soybeans in here planting green right into this stuff so I'm gonna kind of walk around and see what I think if we could just plant right into this these gopher mounds would be a pain things like this are not good for tires good moisture underneath there we're gonna plant this hey Ryan Zach how's it going good hey would it work if we came and swapped that header today and I picked up that 740 oh, it's so bad it's so bad uh, I'll make it come with me I got something cool to show you <laughs> what we got here boys and girls is a brand new J&M four-wheel steer header cart that I'm going to use to pull home my brand new John Deere 740 FD flex draper header this baby's got aluminum rims on it it's got four-wheel steer piped through here engineered beautifully so that the back tires track perfectly with the front tires I did get a two inch longer hitch on it just to make sure we can pull it with the combine and not have any clearance issues with the uh, straw chopper in the back. Check this out. This hitch, it's got springs on it back there that help me pick it up. It's like, it's light as a feather, it's awesome. Time to check these pads. I'm gonna slide this one over just a hair. All right, I'm pretty sure, just judging by the way it's gonna sit down in the cradle, that I'm going to have to slide this main beam back so that it will sit farther back here but the way it's set up with this pin holding this main beam and this that I'm not going to be able to get that on my own unless I pull out the skid steer or the loader bucket and lift that up to support it in which case it's 4.30 and I got to get to deer by about 5 or quarter after so it doesn't fit on there like this. I can't do this today because I'm all by myself. I was all by myself. All by myself. Yep. Okay. It's going to slide back another six inches from where it's at, and that beam's already coming out the front. Ryan, hey, I will not make it today. No, I got an adjustment on the trailer that I'm just not going to be able to get there in time. All right, I'll bring it down in the morning. That thing's got an adjustment on it. The, I can't move it by hand. It's got too much weight on it, too much pressure. So I got to. I already called Ryan, told him I couldn't make it tonight because it's almost five. Okay, yeah. And he that's said fine, said they just switched the hours back, so nobody wants to stick around until six. No. So. No, that's. I don't blame him. Yeah. You want me there to help you for a minute? Yeah, you could if you want to be another set of eyes quick. Yeah. All I got to do is move the main beam back, and then it should sit right on there. Okay. 
It's always a little bit screwing around when you get a new header trailer or you get a new header or you want to put a corn header on one that you've usually pulled the bean header with. There's always some adjustment to it, especially on a header that we've never used before. There's a, a small learning curve. So it's a little bit of messing around, but we got it on there. It did get a little bit too late to go get that other header tonight. So I'm going to have to buzz down there in the morning and swap headers with them. Oh, and by the way, we still got a 608 chopping header here for sale. Shoot me an email if you're interested. If you're only somewhat interested, don't shoot me an email because I've, I've gotten too many of those. Loading. Kind of makes my pickup look small. That's what she said. Anna, you want to show the internet how big you're getting? Huh? Huh? What do you think? Look at those mitts. Look at those mitts. Oh, she's got sharp teeth too, huh? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna put that back on there later. I just don't wanna mess with it right now. I'm going mowing. Before I go mow the lawn here, guys, I wanna mention something, all right? I get asked all the time about a few things. The big one being my skincare regimen. No, nobody ever asks me about that. Nobody cares, definitely nobody cares. The other one is my work clothes. Nobody cares about that either. Okay, so nobody, nobody really asked me any of those questions. But I did get some new work gear from Walls Outdoor Goods. They sent me this stuff, and I just want to say that it is awesome. They make awesome shirts with the armpit vents. They make awesome pants, and they make shorts too. The shorts are really awesome. I, uh, I really like wearing shorts, but I always feel guilty about wearing shorts while I work. But they're cargo shorts, cargo shorts that they sent me. I've been working... I can't talk. I can't talk. That's how excited I am. I've been wearing those cargo shorts a lot while I work, and I love them. And I gotta say, if you need to get any last minute gifts for your dad for Father's Day, you should check out Walls Outdoor Goods. They got some really cool stuff there. They got hunting stuff too, by the way, for the hunters. They got some really, uh, really nice looking coats. And I got a couple big thick hoodies. Check this out. A couple big thick zip up hoodies that I love. They got flannels. They're like, uh, they're just awesome. Men's work gear, men's heavy duty stuff. And I really, really like it. Tell them I sent you, all right? I'll, uh, I'll link them down below. I know where you going. To the puddle, to the edge. Partners in crime, those two. <laughs>